Hello and welcome to the tutorial on advanced searching in the ACM Digital Library. There are many advanced features, but for the purpose of today's session, I'm going to focus on building an advanced search query, saving a search query, using the table of contents alert service, and how to use the My Binders feature. To access the ACM Digital Library database, begin at the SJSU OneSearch homepage. Over on the right, under Quick Links, you'll have a link for articles and databases. From the Databases page, just scroll down, find the ACM Digital Library, and click on that. You're going to be prompted to log in with your SJSU student credentials because the ACM Digital Library is a subscription service. So go ahead and log in now. This is the home page for the ACM Digital Library database. You'll notice at the top, the text San Jose State University indicates that you have logged in to the ACM Digital Library through the San Jose State University subscription. Over on the top right, you'll notice two links, one for sign in and one for sign up. This is for the ACM Digital Library itself. You can set up a free web account, and by doing so, you'll be able to access my binders as well as save search queries. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in and jump right back on. Now that I'm signed in, you'll see my name at the top and also a new link for my binders. This is a feature that I'll cover in just a few minutes. So to get started with an advanced search, click on the advanced search link and this will take you to the query builder page. So here I have two options to search the full text collection which contains all of the ACM published articles and also I could search the ACM guide to computing literature which is a bibliographic database that contains all of the full text collection in addition to some bibliographic information or citation information to other articles that are in the computer and technology field. For the purposes of this example, I'm going to stay with the full text collection. So in the first field, I'm going to select publication year because I want to restrict the publications to the last 10 years. So I'll scroll down here, select 2008, and then I'm going to click the plus sign to add an additional query field. So in this case, I'm going to leave the default of any field, and I'm going to leave the matches all defaulted and not restrict my query by matches any or matches none. And in the search phrase field, I'm going to enter digital libraries. I'm going to add an additional query field by clicking the plus sign, and in this field I'm going to enter disaster management. To save this query, you click on the save query link and enter a name for the query. I'll just use test for the purpose of this example. Now you'll see below that I had saved two queries prior to this example, and here is the, the latest query that I just saved. So you could click on these links to rerun those queries um, at any point that you wanted to. So I'm ready to go ahead and click search, and my search result brings up one article, which is fine for the purposes of this example. So to actually save this to my binders, let's say it's an article that I'm interested in, in coming back to, I'm going to click on the title of the article, and then over on the right, you'll see tools and resources. Here I'm going to go ahead and view my binders or save to binder. So in this case I'll just click on save to binder, and then it's going to ask me to select a binder. So I'm going to click on Disaster Recovery. And you'll notice that I have an option to add some annotation here. This is a very nice feature because you can make some notes about why you like this article, so, or why it supports your research question. And if you are working in a team with other students and you share this binder, they would be able to see the article in addition to the site um, the annotation. So it's, it's a very nice feature. So I'm going to go ahead, let me move this up, and click Save to Binder, and click Done. The other option that I can do on the article page is to use the TOC or the Table of Contents service. So I can send an alert to myself via email or RSS whenever the Table of Contents in which this article um, resides changes. So let's go ahead and click on email. 
And then here I'm going to, it, it defaults to my SJSU EDU email address, but you could change this if you have um, a preferred email address. And then I can just go ahead and click Submit. So now you'll see a red check mark over to the right, and I will then be alerted anytime the table of contents changes. Let's explore the My Binders a little bit more. So at the top of the screen, I'm going to click on My Binders. And that's going to show the My Binders management page. It defaults to my first binder, which is database instruction, and you can see that I have three articles that I have added to that binder. And this is where I can view or edit the annotation if I've actually created one. I can remove the item from the binder if I decide it's not applicable. And I can also reorder these articles just by dragging them. So for instance, if I felt one was more important than the other, I could uh, reorder the, the articles accordingly. I can create additional binders and I can also export the binder um, as a PDF or I can export it into the BibText, EndNote, or ACM reference export formats. One other feature of advanced searching in ACM Digital Library is using the computer classification system which effectively works like a subject search. So I'm going to go back to the main page and I'm going to click on Browse by ACM Computing Classification System. So ACM has created high level topics um, in this grid format and as you as I roll over you can see that there are subtopics that pop up to give you a sense of what additional information would be covered under that high-level topic. And as you drill down into each of these, they will present um, additional sub-subtopics to um, the topic that's, that's listed on the screen. So in some cases, um, these topics don't actually have papers associated with them. And so to avoid having to click on every single one of these to see if there's recent papers, you can click on the recent papers over on the left and that's going to show me all of the papers that fall under the computer systems organization topic or CCS and from here I can scroll through and see if there's any that I am interested in. So you might use this search when you're just starting out and you have a very broad scope topic or research question or you haven't refined your research question and you're just curious about what kind of information is available in this particular database. So this concludes the advanced feature search tutorial. Um, obviously there are additional features that are available in the ACM Digital Library Advanced Search, but those are the ones that I wanted to cover today. I hope the tutorial has been helpful and that you feel more confident using these advanced features.